Today, I'm really excited to announce and show off Langraph Studio, um, which is the first agent ID. And so we've built this to work on top of Langraph. Langraph is a framework that we released a few months ago and have been working on for over a year that is aimed at building complex agentic applications. It is extremely low level, it's extremely controllable, it comes with a built-in persistence layer, and we've seen it really accelerate the pace at which teams can build and productionalize these agentic types of applications. Building these applications is often very code heavy, but there's new elements to it that aren't present in traditional software engineering. You're interacting with LLMs, it's a much more iterative process. You're building these agents, which are these complex systems. It's nice to be able to visualize that. And, and so we've been working on something we think complements the, the code development experience, and we're calling it Langraph Studio. And it's really an IDE for building these types of agentic applications. So I wanna show it off and show how you can use it. So after you download it, you can open it up. It's a desktop app, it runs locally. So I can open it up and I need to log into Langsmith. So right now everyone, even with uh, free accounts, gets access to Langraph uh, Studio. So let me open it back up and I can now see that I can basically open up different folders. So what's in these folders? You'll need a Langraph graph definition and that will need to be available in a Python file. Currently this only works with Python. And then there'll be a few other configuration things you need to set up. You can either set this up as part of the UI experience, or you can put this as a JSON file that you then load. So let's go to Langraph example. Langraph example is based off of a repo. Um, you can find it online, it's a GitHub repo. And if we look at what it contains, if we go there, we can see that we have this agent.py file. So this is where our agent is defined. And we can see that down at the bottom, we have this graph, which is a compiled agent. So we've got this agent.py uh, file with the agent in it. And then we also have this langraph.json file. And this is what we can either configure in the UI or we can just put in JSON. And so we have three things in here. We have the dependencies. So this points to the dependencies and it basically says install everything in this folder. There's a requirements.txt in this folder. So we see that and we smartly pull that in and build uh, the agent environment with the requirements in this requirement.txt. So some langchain imports and then Tavili, which we'll use for search. We have uh, this, this graphs thing, which points to agent.py and then the graph variable. This basically tells Langraph Studio where to find the agent. You can deploy multiple agents here if you want as well. And then we have this environment file. So this points to environment variables that we're going to need to load to run this agent. And so if we look at the example environment file, we can see that we need three keys. We need an Anthropic API key. We need an OpenAI API key. And then we need a Tavili API key. And so these two, Anthropic and OpenAI, are for the language models that we're going to use. And Tavili is for the search engine. So if we go back to Langraph Studio, we can see that we've now loaded up the agent. And let me move this up here. And so the first thing that we see is this nice visualization of the agent. We can see the nodes um, that are defined. We can see where it starts. We can see where it ends. We can see the different uh, branches that come out of each node. And this is a great way to visualize any type of complex agent that you're building. We can then start to interact with this agent. So let's send in a message. Let's say, hi, what's the weather in SF? So the agent starts running. And it sees and it realizes that it needs to call to Ville. So it calls to Ville with a search term of weather in San Francisco. It gets back a response and then it gets out a, uh, and then it generates a final answer. So this is a run of an agent. Already this is helpful because I can see as the agent is progressing what exactly is happening. I can see the streaming of tokens back. I can then see when it's finished. I can see the tool call. I can see exactly what the tool call is. It's in a nice and explorable way. So I can click in. I can see the results of the tool call. I can see the tool parameters represented nicely. This is already helpful for just understanding what's happening live as the agent is running. But what's really cool is I can then start to interact with this. So one thing I can do is I can modify the state of the agent directly. So if I wanted to do some simulation where I said something like, okay, let me uh, edit this and let's say what would have happened if the agent instead generated weather in San Francisco, AccuWeather or something like this. Then I can click, so I can modify it directly there and I can then click this fork button. 
that'll then start up a separate parallel thread where it continues from this spot in time as if it had searched for this term. So this is a simple example. There's only three steps, but as your agents get longer and longer, you can imagine how nice it is to be able to do this halfway through an agent run. You can also run this graph in a sort of debug mode. So let's see what that means. So I can click here, I can create a new thread. Let me create the same input. So what's the weather in SF? And I can then go up here to interrupts. I can click interrupt on all. And this will basically mean before every node, it uh, stops. So let's click submit. We can see that after the first node, it's already asked me to continue. So I click continue and it now generates the agent node. It then stops. And so if I wanted to modify it here, I could, I could edit it. And then I can click continue, runs the action node. This is gonna make the call. And then after that, I need to click continue again and it keeps on continuing. So this is useful for being able to walk through the agent step by step. There's another really cool part that we can do. And this is where we modify the underlying code. So let's say that I wanted to do some prompt engineering. Let's say I wanted the final response to always be in Spanish. So I could, you know, if without this, I would modify the prompt and I would then rerun the agent from scratch, which is fine. But again, for long running agents, that's not the fastest iteration cycle. You want to really drill in on what would have happened with this node exactly if I reran with a different prompt. So let's see how we can do that. I'll open up my code editor and I have a nice little system prompt right here. And this says, just right now, be a helpful assistant. Let me add some new instructions. When you are responding to the user, respond in Spanish. So I modify the prompt. I can now go back to Langraph Studio. I can see that it's reloading. It's now finished reloading. I can go back here and I can click this fork and retry button. So this will rerun this node with the updated code. So I don't have to simulate the first two calls anymore. I can say, hey, let's, let's keep these nodes consistent, exactly what happened there. I want to exactly happen, but I just want to rerun this node. And so I rerun it. If I want to change it again, let's now change this to old English. So I can change that. I can go back here, reloads very quickly. I can click this fork and retry button and it responds. And now it's talking in old English in the olden tongue. So this shows off really cool human in the loop interaction patterns that I think are really, really helpful when developing agentic applications. LLMs represent a new component of applications that we're all building. And so we deserve frameworks to help build those types of applications. And that's what we've built with Langraph. But we also deserve tooling and editors to help interact and develop these as we're going along. And that's what we've built with Langraph Studio. I've been using this for the past week. I think it's incredibly helpful for speeding up the development speed of these more complex types of applications. I think there are a lot of other features that we can add in here. And I'm really excited to see what everyone builds with it, how they use it, and the feature requests that they have. So please try it out and then let us know any feedback, any feature requests. This is one of the coolest things that we've launched and I'm really excited for everyone to try it out. Thanks.